Hey, what's up, guys? Dan Clemente. I am coming to you here from my basement shop. Uh, we are going to do we're gonna, something today, a little different than I'm usually doing. I'm usually doing like machine reviews or whatever. But today's going to be how to use your JTEC laser. It doesn't matter what the wattage is. If you have a 2.0 or a 2.8 or you have a 7 watt, whatever it may be, we're going to do uh, and a video on showing how to set up the tool paths for you in VCarve and get your laser running properly. Uh, so a lot of people always ask me, how do you get the laser engravings, the cross hatching to make it come out? So I call this the Phil Johnson method of how to set up a laser. So I'm gonna go through the settings. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna engrave a, uh, one of my keychains, and we're gonna do a quick laser path and show you how we do it. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here and take right, a look. So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna set up two separate pocket tool paths and we're gonna engrave this keychain right here, okay? Uh, this is a, a, a Piper Cherokee, November 202 in Romeo. It is the plane that I own and we're gonna make a keychain for my keys uh, for the plane. So what we do is we first start by going into pocket number one. Now I already have it set up, but I will show you this part. If you already have V-Carve, you know to select whatever, whatever parts you wanna engrave. And we're gonna go in here and it's a pocket tool path, okay? and your cut depth is gonna be 001, 0 .001. And you're gonna choose a laser engraving tool path or a laser engraving tool. And this is the settings for the laser engraving tool. The diameter is 0 .0065. The pass depth is 0 .01. The step over rate is 0 .005. The spindle speed is 255. Now, what that means is the way the laser works is the laser works from a value of zero, which means off, to 255, which is basically the full output power of the laser. So if you want to do something a little bit lighter, you would change the setting, let's say, to maybe 100 or 150, okay? So 255 is the max. That's the hottest the laser can go, the brightest the laser can go, the most output the laser can give. 255. Your feed rate is going to be 105 inches per minute and your plunge rate is 20 inches per minute. All right, so that's your laser engraving tool path. You will now come over to raster and you will, it'll be set for conventional. All right, now the reason the conventional or climb is not on there is because no profile pass is selected. If you were to change that, you would see that that lights back up. So if you put no profile pass and you're going to put 45 degrees. Make sure, make sure, make sure that ramp plunge moves is off. Make sure that's unchecked. And then you're going to go down and you're going to calculate. Okay. I have an, a vector, some duplicate vector in there. I'd have to find it, but that's okay. Just hit okay. So now you'll go into pocket number two. Same exact tool, same exact cut depth, raster. This time, you're gonna select last. And you're gonna make the angle 45 degrees with a negative, and you're gonna put conventional. Make sure again that your ramp plunge moves is on nothing. It should be not selected, okay? And then you're gonna calculate, same thing. And again, there it is. There is the, the preview of that keychain. Now, what I did here is since the keychains were cut out earlier on a separate machine on the, on the mini, I had to change the zero location. So I made the zero location here, basically right on the edge of the keyhole of the keychain. All right. So that's what it's going to look like. We'll take both pocket one, pocket two, and we're going to save it and make sure when you save it, you save it visible tool paths to one file and it has both tool paths right here you don't want to put it on one tool path make sure it's on visible tool paths to one file and you're going to save it with the post processor that does not have a z movement okay if you put it on this other x carve inch that means the z will go up and down we don't want the z to go up and down z needs to stay stationary so you're going to use in this case, I have one set up here, JTEC Gerbil No Z. The Z will not move. And you'll save it. And I save it here. I'm going to save it as November 2021 Romeo. I have it saved already. And then you would go over to your GRBL. 
and you would set up your laser and I'll do that in a second here. All right, so here we are in Universal G-Code Sender. We have uh, ready to go. The machine is where it needs to be. We're, we set up our X, Y, and Z axis exactly where we want it. If you remember a few minutes ago, I said about having the zero location right at the keyhole. Well, we did that. We have it set up right on the keyhole. There's the blank uh, keychain. And what we did was we set up, we have macros set up inside Universal G-Code Sender to turn on the laser, set the max output of the laser, and to turn the laser on. So basically, when I come in here every day, if I'm doing lasering, I hit turn on GRBL, and that changes the value of 32 uh, equal to 1, meaning the laser is on. And then you can do uh, laser GRBL 255. That is setting, if you look at the bottom here, you can see them coming up. That is setting the output of the laser to 255. And then I have this one here, laser on. And that's giving a, a, a basically a command to turn on the spindle, but it's not a spindle, it's the laser, okay? So that is what we're doing there. So with that said, we would come over and we would select our file, which is November 2021 Romeo. It comes up here and we could, uh, everything's ready to go. And remember we have, it's, uh, oh, I turned the laser off accidentally. So we have it ready to go right there. Uh, the dot was there a second ago when you saw it. Let me just put it back on here. I can actually get it back. There we go, it's back on. Okay, so there's the laser ready to go. On this particular laser, uh, this one is um, set up to do an eighth of an inch above the material. So that's where that dot is right now. If you're using an older JTEC, it would be three inches away from the material. But this one is the shrouded style with the, from that's in the collet. So it's an, in, an eighth of an inch away from the material. All right, so we're in there. We got it all set up. We're right on the keyhole itself. We'll come back over here. And we'll hit send. And there it goes. There is the final product. I did it on both sides. And uh, it's ready to be cleaned up. I use alcohol to clean up the excess burn. That Basically, that's the sap and stuff coming out of the wood. And I just take a little alcohol, rubbing alcohol, clean it up, and it all will go away in one wipe. And then I take linseed oil, and I uh, linseed oil these. And here are ones that are going out. You can see the difference in the color. These ones are going out on Saturday. And you can see the difference. And they have they get a key ring. I buy those on Amazon. And that is what they look like when they're done. And you can see all that burn marks. If you can zoom in here, there the burn marks are gone. And once I clean it up with some alcohol. So that is how we make a laser engraving, a short, easy, simple laser engraving. I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. And uh, that's that. Any questions, again, check it out. Ask me, uh, write a comment, anything. Just let me know and I'll try to help you out. But uh, there you go, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the holiday. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. And make sure, again, keep on seeing, seeing. And please do me a favor, like and subscribe. If you don't like it, do give me a thumbs down. I don't care. We'll see you guys later. Thanks.